uh, get their help, you must have a story. And uh, your story must, you must craft your story. Crafting, crafting your story in the sense that uh, you approach them, you can make an appointment, and uh, make an appointment with your mentor, the potential mentor, and then tell the person, I admire this in your life, sir, and I see that you have made progress in this area, um, and I would like for you to help me as I make the same, uh, take my journey. Uh, many mentors will be happy to do that, especially if they see that you have demonstrated excellence. Uh, say, for example, in the place of work, you're already doing well at your level, uh, and you're looking to go to the next level and scale additional levels. And uh, so if you approach a mentor who has seen that you're already doing well at your level, they'll be more than happy to help you to be able to scale new heights. And not only that, it's important also as a mentee uh, to have to demonstrate followership. If you don't demonstrate followership, it's going to be difficult for you to actually be, for the mentor to help you. It's the disciple today that becomes an apostle tomorrow. And so uh, we need to submit to the leadership of the mentors. Uh, and that's the problem sometimes people have. Uh, they find it difficult to submit to the leadership of the mentor. But if you are able to demonstrate excellence, uh, demonstrate followership, submit to their leadership, then it's easy for mentors to take you under their wings. You can make an appointment, uh, send them an email, and uh, talk one-on-one -on -one with them. The other thing you can do is, like I have said, uh, you can also learn from the biographies of, uh, of people and read their books, and you can also sort of be mentored somehow like that. Now, what I mean by that is this. So we still have our, uh, the regular mentor, but if you think about it, Jesus is still our mentor. Our Lord Jesus Christ came into this world, lived for about three, three and a half years, and the words of the Lord that we read daily guide us and mentor us. Uh, so, but as we think in terms of real life mentors, uh, craft your story, make an appointment, send them an email, and then call them and talk with them. Uh, sometimes just do it one-on-one. -on -one, uh, and once they see that you have the potential, most mentors will be more than happy to take you under their wings. I hope that helps you. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. I uh, will go to the next question, and this will be for Pastor, Pastor Chuba. If you, as an employer right now, many people have lost their job, they are at home, and we know what the market is saying in terms of job opportunities. How do we get to a point in which we start something by ourselves, a business by ourselves that is not capital intensive because somebody that has lost their job for three months might not have the capital that they need, might not have the credit that they need to get a loan from the bank. How can we start something, no matter how little it is, so that we can get to a point in which we ourselves will become an employer of labor. Pastor Chuba, please. To get what you, what you need. I was talking to a brother, I think it was two, three weeks ago, and he was telling me he's uh, trying to, um, he's trying to get a, a thing because he's trying to do a little business in healthcare. And he said, but you know, I don't really have money now. I don't have much. Um, probably he might need 10,000 or so thereabout in order to get what he was looking for. I said, you, you own a house? He said, yes, he has a house. And I said, how long have you been living here? It's like three years. I said, do you know you can actually take out value from your current house? And I gave him the name of uh, one banker that will easily do that. Take out some of the house, and his house has really appreciated in the area where he lived. 
and he can take out some money and use that to do the business. So, and the other thing too is be very careful in trying to start big. Get into a business that will require very little capital. That will require you for not borrowing much because every business is a risk. There is, a, a, it could fail, it could succeed. And so don't get yourself more into a bigger problem by borrowing much. Praise the Lord. Uh, again, I think some of our churches are very good with developing the brethren and helping them to stand. Amen? And uh, the brethren could be a good resource for us to help us out, and the church could also be uh, a help in, in some area. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Uh, the next question is to our pastor, Pastor Benga. It's two questions that uh, I'll just put them together. Number one is, how does one do and know or sense that their growth is slow, that they are not making the necessary growth they're supposed to make as a professional? And then how do we now get to a point in which our skills and ability are sought after? How do you get to a point in which you develop yourself so much that you will become a kind of hot cake in the job market. Pastor Bringer, sir. Pastor Inka. Yes. Um, those are important questions, and um, it's important to understand the word slow. For you, something may appear slow, but it may just be that God is trying to develop your capacity. If you think about Joseph, uh, Joseph, if anyone looks at Joseph and the dream he had, and the time it took between when he had the dream and the fulfillment of the dream. The dream. Uh, when you read scriptures, you might think it just took, just took a, few, a few days. Uh, it actually took years. And so the, the understanding what it means, what slow means, it's important. God may just be developing uh, your capacity to be able to handle the next level. Now, I haven't said that, Joe. For some people, the problem is that in, uh, they are not demonstrating discipline enough. They are not willing to stretch. You see, sometimes in the place of work, uh, maybe there's an additional task. Say your boss has given you uh, your own task. Maybe it's a 15-member, um, 20-member team. And you've been assigned your task, and then all of a sudden something else comes up, and your boss says, I need this item. Uh, to be uh, quickly uh, completed. And he's looking for a volunteer who will be able to help here. Now, you have your work, you have an assigned date, and you've got to keep, you've got to make sure that you're able to still deliver. What do you do at that time? Are you willing to take on additional responsibility by stretching a little bit more so that you go an extra mile and your teacher sees that you go the extra mile? When you do that, it basically will help you. If you think about Rebecca, for example, when um, the servant of Abraham was trying to get a, uh, a wife for um, Isaac, and uh, the servant went and approached Rebecca, and Rebecca said, um, it will take care of the animals, and it, will, it went beyond, it went the extra mile. And uh, it was not just to uh, give, uh, give the servant what he asked for, but he went the extra mile, and that actually impressed uh, the servant of Abraham. The same thing, going the extra mile helps. You're willing to stretch. Uh, just like a rubber band is not useful until it stretches. When you stretch, you will shine. Um, quickly, the other thing is that sometimes people are not hardworking enough. They want the glory, but they don't want to pay the price. You must remember that sacrifice is important. You're willing to sacrifice, you're willing to pay the price. And uh, sometimes it's good to give personal example of have times when I would have to walk actually because of something I needed to deliver, walk till maybe 4 a.m. Sunday morning, and then I have to get ready for church and still preach fresh. So it's important for us to be willing to stretch. Now, the second point, the second question is, 
how do you then uh, get to the point where your skills and your abilities are sought after? Number one, you've got to upskill yourself. Look at your skill today. Do a skill set assessment. What do you have today? What is the trend in your, in your career? What's the current trend? What is the future trend in your current career? And look at that and upskill yourself. When you do that, you will be relevant, always relevant. Who wants to, who wants to lay off or fire someone that is relevant? Uh, it reminds me about the story one company I was in before, uh, some years back. I saw somebody there, he has already, he's already mastered his skill, uh, and the, the task he's been assigned, assigned to do. And I think he's done that for how many years? For a number of years, and he was comfortable there. But there was opportunity to go to and not some other areas which are more uncomfortable. He did not want to leave his comfort zone for the the the, comfort, the other zone that is not comfortable because he would need to stretch. But because he didn't do that, over time, when the company was downsizing or right sizing, he was one of the people that was let go. But if he had been relevant and upskill himself, then he would have actually been able to. Uh, continue to uh, deliver. So relevance is the key. Read books, uh, look at magazines, look at trends in your, in your career area. Ask your boss about, discuss with your boss and uh, see things you can do that can make you to continue to add value. The more value you had, the more the opportunity you have to be sought after. Thank you. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Uh, the next question is for uh, Pastor Chuba. Someone asked that, is it a good time now to buy stock? And if yes, what areas of stock do you think is good to invest in right now? Um, please, but, uh, uh, Pastor, really sorry, much. Pastor, please, let's spend like one minute on each question now because we have some no questions coming in. Thank you. God bless you. You need to be very, very careful when uh, dealing with talk, stock in times like this. Uh, my intuition would tell you not to dabble into that if you have not been uh, in that business until now. Uh, it's not the best time to enter, but if you are already in there, your money is already there, it's already vested. So um, you might want to talk to your, uh, in fact, you need to have a proactive uh, money managers in order to know how to and actually discuss with them and see what they are doing with your money and make sure that it is properly invested. Uh, there are uh, stocks that are really climbing up, like those areas that we talked about, businesses that are still hiring. They are stock Zoom. The stock is, I mean, if, if we had known by Zoom, you know, before all this, you know, the stock is going all the roof. And some of the other things, Amazon kept climbing, and other of those people are still in the, in the retail industry, are still doing very well. Uh, but be very, very careful when going into stock, at least in, around in times like this. Thank you. God bless you. The next question is for Pastor Benga. Uh, you spoke about mentorship, and you have told us how to approach mentorship. Do we have to have mentors for different area of growth in our life? Somebody wants to know, take for instance, do I have to have mentor for spiritual growth, for technical growth, financial growth, or I can just have one mentor and I'm understanding that mentor for every area of my life? Thank you, Pastor Yinka. Excellent question. Uh, the, the very nature of mentorship demands that you get mentors for different areas of your life. There are times that you have, for example, somebody that may serve as a spiritual mentor as well as a career mentor, if that's the same career that you are basically following. But your mentors have to be people that will say they've been there, done that. That means they've, they've taken the path. They, they've gone there before you are ahead of you and they've succeeded and you're just standing on their shoulders as it were to learn from them and become your best as well. So it's, uh, you, you certainly can have mentors in different categories uh, so that you can maximize your, uh, your destiny. And, and while you're on that, sir, 
is it a good advice to pay for mentorship? Because we see a lot of people that call themselves mentors online now, some from different parts of the world, and you will be here, and they will say they are mentoring you. Is it a good advice to pay for mentorship? Well, so the, the problem with that is that, remember, a mentor is someone that has gone before you and you can learn of him, receive of him, heard of him, and seen in him. Like Apostle Paul said, if somebody is far away, uh, you're not able to really uh, see the person, uh, walk with the person, receive of the person, unless maybe uh, occasionally there are times that you both meet. Uh, so long distance mentorship can be fine, but it's not altogether uh, the best because it does help if you can meet one on one with your mentor. Uh, and that helps to even, uh, and so to help with the bonding. Because mentorship is, uh, like I said, like a, a coach. Think about a coach. Here is uh, uh, an NBA coach, Michael Jordan's coach, for example. It's not going to coach Michael Jordan from afar or someone in the football team. So the closer it is, the, m the better it helps with the mentoring pro uh, process as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. God bless you. The next question is for Pastor Chuba. Uh, somebody says, sir, what do you have to say on business continuity plan, continuity of operation plan for self-employed pr and private business owners? He says, I observe that a lot of self-employed private business owners are hurting during this period because most don't have a plan in place. So in case of future emergency, what can you advise on the resources that is out there that can help in having a business plan, continuity plan, if in case of any other emergency like this happens in the future? I, uh I've been a consultant for several years and I believe in um, uh, getting help where you need it. There are sometimes some skills you don't really have and sometimes you might need help of other experts to come in to tell you, depending on the business industry, what you need to do and how you need to do what uh, that needs to be done in order to uh, maximize profit. You know, for example, if you are trying to uh, uh, a, a company and you know you've not seen growth in terms of revenue, and now and you know for sure that your biggest problem is because of sales. Uh, some people call here, call your company, and they are trying to uh, know uh, if they can use your service. But when they hear your accent or something like that, they, they won't tell you that, but they say thank you for the information. And they won't call back. Now, if you look at that trend and you find out that you're losing customers and you can't, you don't know why, employ someone, which I have done in the past too, who can actually come and study your business process and then tell you, you know, your bottleneck is in this area. You might need to pay some few dollars uh, because they charge, some of these people charge, uh, how many leg and you should be very careful who you get to and the contract should be structured in a way that you need to begin to see productivity if you have to extend uh, their presence but um, one thing is number one thank God for this country there's provision right now for small businesses uh, that are hurting um, if, if it's not too late for you to apply, you know, to see if you can get the necessary, some funds that are available in order to put into your business to move forward. But that's not all. You really need to also look at the, where are you getting bottleneck and then do specific, make some specific changes. You know, you might really be overstaffed, you know, and you need to take some hard decision in order to be able to, uh, to move forward. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Pastor. While you are still on that, just one minute, please. What online business can you advise that someone can go into? I know you mentioned a few. Uh, can you please just tell us one or two, three of it that one can go into? So this is one area that I've actually, uh, I'm thinking some people are thinking uh, is online sales. 
just sales. I know a pharmacist, and this is a pharmacist. He has his own pharmaceutical shop. So he's in the day is a pharmacist and he's doing his business. But outside of this, he, he has ordered so much things that he sells online, ladies' bags and so much, and a lot of the things. In fact, if you go and Google some of the products that are trending, that are high sales in Amazon or eBay, you will see some, uh, some long lists. So some of these people will actually go and buy this, maybe in, in, uh, in Philippines or in, in China or somewhere, and they're stocking and they're selling it online. And this man is saying that, look, this thing is actually much more productive, more profitable than the pharmaceutical business that he's doing. So that's one. Also, I somebody just uh, also see the online coaching for children in maths and English is really going on well now, especially those in high school. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. And uh, the last one now, because of our time, we'll just take this final one. Uh, Pastor Benga, how can one be very effective in managing time and avoiding procrastination? And also, someone says a friend talked about a mentorship program that helped her to become highly effective in managing time and achieving her goals. But unfortunately, the cost of the mentorship program is too high. How can I get such without having to pay such an amount of money? Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Yinka. Uh, quickly, uh, the problem of time management can be addressed by looking at, um, there have been some work that is done on this, where you look at four quadrants. You look at things that are priority, things that are important, and you look at how to look uh, basically handle important things and urgent things, important things, not urgent, urgent things and not important. If you look at the task you have to do in terms of the order of importance as well as urgency, that will help you with priority. So the problem of time management is actually the problem of lack of priority. Once priority is in place, it helps to manage time. Very quickly, an example will be somebody is in the place of work, you have a number of tasks to do. Your boss has assigned A, B, C, D, E, F to you. And then all of a sudden, your boss calls you into the office and says, I want you to do this again. Now, what you need to then do, and your boss says, I need this by so time. It's always important to find out from your boss what's the priority. Remember, and give your boss the context. I have six things already on my plate, and this is the seventh thing. What is the priority of this? Because your boss may not even realize that. And if the, your boss then can say, oh, move this to the very top, this becomes the priority. So the problem of time management is simply the problem of priority. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, praise the Lord. I know some questions are still coming in, but we need to move on. And by the grace of God, we will try as much as possible to make the seminarians to answer your question. Please check, stay on the uh, YouTube uh, channel and also on our Zoom channel. And uh, we'll make sure that we get the answers across to you. And also some people were asking about the IT training, the one that our Father in the Lord put together for DC area. That can we still have something like that? So something like that is in the works, but it might take a different form. Please be on the lookout. Continue to check on our media platforms for further information. And as you do so, the Lord will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Let's close our eyes and go to the Lord in prayer. Begin to talk to the Lord right now. This purpose of this seminars is for us to be the best of God. To be the best that God wants us to be. Begin to talk to the Lord and tell the Lord, Oh Lord, in this period, in this time, we have witnessed times like this before, even in the Bible days, where the Lord's people were blessed. Begin to talk to the Lord and tell the Lord, Oh Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that even at this period, Lord, you will open the windows of heaven. You will bless me mightily in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Begin to talk to the Lord. Begin to tell the Lord. The Lord can do it. The Lord can do it. Tell the Lord to help you. That all these things that you have had today, that you will make the best of them. And you will get 
the best of God, even for your life, even in this period, in the mighty name of Jesus. Maybe you are there, you are, you are, I mean, you are thinking you are not able, you are thinking that it's not possible, but the Lord has made you to understand today that you are well able. You are well able. The grace of God is sufficient for you. Begin to tell the Lord and say, Lord, I have had your word today. I have had your word today. Oh, Lord, make me the best that you want me to be. Make me the best that you want me to be. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Tell the Lord, the Bible says, the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouse, in all that thou settest thy hand unto. It will bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth you. It does not matter where you are, whether you are in Africa, whether you are in America, you are in Europe, wherever you are listening to us right now. The word of the Lord is the same, and it says wherever you are, it can bless you. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, bless me mightily. Bless me mightily. Bless me mightily in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity you have given us to hear your word in a new way. Father, we pray that these things that we have had today, Father, the grace to take advantage of them and use them for the betterment of our life. Father, give every one of us in Jesus' name. Father, your word has come out. The teachers you have used, you have used them in a mighty way. Father, we pray every one of us before the end of this year, we will have testimony even from these teachings in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you will move the body of Christ forward in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for the seminarians. Father, we pray that you will bless them mightily. As they have, become, as they have been a blessing to us this morning, bless them in return in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we'll pray. Wherever you are, you may rise as we worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the I am that I am, the creator of the universe, the giver of life, the glorious God, the beautiful King, Excellent God, the one who was, who is, and is to come. Worship the name of the Lord this morning.
COVID-19, they have preserved us, they have brought us out of this situation. We have every reason to worship God. We have every reason to praise the Lord. He is faithful. He is great. He is worthy of all our praises. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God is worthy. Even if our entire bodies were filled with mouth, it would not be enough to bless the Lord. He does great and excellent things every moment. But I will worship you. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord, the Lord has made. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made.
Open your mouth and say, Lord, I worship you, I adore you, I exalt your name in the beauty of your holiness. Prophet Isaiah caught a glimpse of the glory of this God in Isaiah 63. He saw an angel crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full. John the beloved, he saw mysterious looking beasts not resting day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And so this afternoon, I want you to open your mouth and call him holy. He's a righteous God. He's an unlimited God. He's a mighty God. Those same beasts and the cry from heaven said, Blessed be this God that liveth forever and ever. The four and twenty elders all fell down before him that sat on the throne and worshipped him that sat on the throne, casting down their crowns before his throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things for thy pleasure. They are as we are created. And so, brethren, if you are still alive, if you are a survivor of this pandemic that hit the whole world, and even in the nation of America, that almost all over 100,000 people have gone down to the grave, and you are still alive, open your mouth wherever you are and express your gratitude. And I believe that gratitude can be profound when you catch a glimpse of this glorious God, when your eyes are open and you have a revelation of His glory, a revelation of 
power. Father, we bless your name. We exalt your holy name. We bow before you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we worship. In Jesus' name, we worship. Can somebody say amen wherever you are because God sees you. He recognizes you and he knows you by your location, by your name. Father, we bless you. Thank you. Please be seated in his presence. I want to welcome you to the Deeper Life Bible Church. The vision of this church is achieving heaven's goal. You know, Jesus said in the second verse of the 14th chapter of the book of John, he said, in my father's house are many mansions. He said, if, we, if it were not so, he would have told us. He would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And how does the Deeper Life Bible Church help our members actualize this vision? It's through life and reaching worship services, life and reaching weekly and monthly services. On Sundays, we gather at our various locations uh, to actually worship the Lord. Here in Washington, D.C., uh, we meet at 9 a.m. in the morning. And on Sundays, we have a wonderful time of search the scriptures. Today has been very unique. If you look at the, uh, the search scripture time, it was actually transformed to a kind of interactive uh, seminar time, transformational seminar time. And those are the kind of things we do here in Deeper Life Bible Church. We are member, uh, members focused, heaven focused, as well as members uh, focused. The development of members is actually our concern. And so uh, on Mondays as well, uh, we meet for Monday Bible study. And during the Bible study, we tune in and we sit at the feet of the pace setter of the Deeper Life Bible Church the person of Pastor W.F. Uh, Kumui, who breaks down, he teaches the Word of God line by line, precept by precept, and uh, I believe for as many as have been partakers of the Bible study, they have, I'm sure you have experienced a transformation in your knowledge of the Word of God. And I also want to, uh, of course, the Bible study uh, vary in timing and vary with uh, date. Uh, vary with uh, day of the week for here uh, for those of us in the Washington DC area and many other places we meet on Mondays at uh, 6 30 6 30 p.m. on some locations Tuesdays uh, we also have uh, another event during the week on Fridays for some locations is on Thursdays and the, it's called the Friday Revival Thursday Revival uh, is during revival services, we actually had the opportunity of sharing our testimonies that's fine of the glory of the Lord and all that He's done for us during the week. We actually, during the revival service, get revived through inspiration or inspired uh, ministrations that come from anointed ministers of, of God. Praise the Lord. Can somebody praise the Lord? Revival service is also at 6.30 uh, p.m. All, that depends also on your location. Uh, at this I want to uh, welcome our new, uh, those who are new to our midst. Uh, perhaps, uh, you know, we're meeting, this is online uh, platform, uh, online service. And maybe perhaps you're joining us for the first time. Uh, wherever you are, we just want to say we recognize you and we value you. We are uh, hoping that you've been richly blessed and uh, because this time will be over very soon we will also look forward to you becoming part and parcel of the physical fellowship uh, in this church the Lord bless you as you continue with us in Jesus name amen I want to also make other announcements uh, we thank the Lord for the just concluded uh, young adult uh, retreat or convention it was great it was held virtually and uh, we believe uh, that as many of our young adults that were participants in that event uh, that they were greatly blessed uh, and we believe that uh, the impact of that of the young adult event will outlast you know uh, time and will take them to the next level in their lives 
testimonies are abounding as a result of the young adult event. I will also want to use the opportunity to tell us that uh, the Youth First, which is uh, proposed to start June 25th uh, to 27, June 25th to 27, will still hold, but it will follow suit, uh, just as a young adult uh, event was held. It will be virtually, so that means it will be online. And there will be more information as time uh, approaches, as the time approaches. God bless you. And for our parents, we would like you to encourage uh, your children who are within the age category uh, of the youths to be part and parcel of this event. God has prepared a lot for them. And our prayer is that all that God has in store for them will be theirs as they participate in Jesus' name. And praise the Lord. I also want to bring uh, us to the knowledge of our prayer line, uh, regional prayer line uh, meetings. It usually holds from Monday uh, to Thursdays of every week at 9 p.m. And during the time, time of the pandemic, we have actually included Saturdays and Sundays. And on these uh, respective days, the uh, meeting time online is at 8 p.m. The uh, uh, information pertaining to the regional prayer can be obtained from our church website, uh, uh, dlbcdc.org. And also, uh, our electronic department will be projecting the uh, information. So you can copy the number and log on to join the prayers. Monday through Thursday, 9 p.m. and Saturday, Sunday at 8 p.m. Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to give unto the Lord whatever that you have brought before the Lord. I would like for you to dip your hands in your wallet. If you don't have the opportunity of giving through uh, the online arrangement, and uh, wherever you are, I'm sure your pastor in your location has a system set up for you to give online. It could be through Zelle, uh, it could be whatever platform your pastor or your church has put in place for you. And if you don't have the privilege of this technology, you can also put the money aside. Just put it in uh, somewhere so that when we all return, you can actually still give to the Lord all that you put aside. So let's bow down our heads as we pray over our our tithes and offering. Oh God, we thank you because you've spared our lives. And Lord, so what we're giving is just a token of what you've done for us. And Lord, we are pleading that you accept our offerings. And may, oh God, may this count as righteousness for us. And give us the opportunity as we get uplifted and promoted to even do more for you and for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, because of time, we will not be uh, actually having our Bible reading. And so, uh, we will skip that for today. The Lord bless us as we continue with the uh, service. And so, let's just thank the Lord for everything that he has done. Let's bless his name as we proceed to the next uh, segment of uh, today's service. I believe the choir will be ministering to us. And so stay tuned and be blessed. God bless you. <laughs> 